Welcome to episode 25 of the Blacktown Football Hour podcast. I'm joined by all of our PL1 and 2 players, coaches, and those in between who are particularly entertaining as well. Uh, I'm very grateful that they've taken time out of their lives, out of training as well, uh, to come on here and give you guys a good show for one of our final podcast episodes of the year. I'm joined by Matt, Ellie, and Taylor from the Ponds, who are from our Deploy PL1. From our Deploy PL1 and their opposition is also... Jamison, Ronan, and Jaden Zwerb. Uh, I'm also joined by our Deploy PL2 men from Prospect, Danny, Peter, and of course Lee Dryland. And from Eastern Creek, Matt and Scott Young, coach and captain, respectively. We have gotten through all that. I didn't get any names wrong, which would have been really embarrassing. But I think we're going to have a really good show here. Stick around uh, for all of the controversial takes. You're going to see predictions from PL1 teams on the PL2 final, vice versa as well. And I look at sort of each other's play styles and what things they've observed from over the years. And perhaps if we have these guys competing against each other in games next year, depending on what happens in the offseason... There could be some hot takes to take from there as well. Guys, just generally, thanks so much for joining us here. I really, really do appreciate it. I won't get you all to, to thank, to, to say hi in return, but I think what we'll do is we'll start with uh, the ones who are holding the microphones at the moment. Um, I'll go to my left first. Actually, no, you go first, Matt. You're fine. Uh, you were the first one to actually get into a grand final out of any of the teams sitting here. So you guys were qualified uh, on, a, on a fortnight ago now. So we spoke about it last week on the segment. Uh, that you guys featured in, but since then, and, and since we spoke about it a week ago, um, how's the squad looking? Did anything happen in training that we should be concerned about, or are you guys looking pretty good? No, no real concern since we made it. Um, reserve grade ended up getting through as well, so um, we have both grades through, similar to what Prospect have, so it um, should be a good night and probably shows where both clubs are as, a, um, as, as depth, um, that both first grade and reserve grade made it through, so... Um, we'll have a light session. <laughs> we don't need to do anything silly before a grand final with how the season's gone. But, yeah, we're looking okay. Mm. Now, we talked plenty last week about how you're the only ones here to not have an under-21s, and uh, that's, that's served you well. In, in terms of uh, having 22 starting players across two games, are we, are we looking on course to have 11 and 11 different players for each uh, of those games, or how many are going to be shared, do you reckon? Uh, <laughs> I've only got 11 for first grade. So we'll only have 11 fresh for first grade, which is, look, you only need 11 players to play a football match, so we'll be right. That's good. Uh, now, I'll cross straight to Prospect while they're here as well. Obviously, you guys have a, have a 21s team, and uh, having only really touched on it in terms of what it's meant to the detriment of Eastern Creek last week, I'm not sure if you saw the segment, but obviously that makes squad depth more difficult. Uh, how helpful for you guys do you think, uh, having heard what they said last week or just having been able to just think about not having a 21s, like, how much do you reckon your season could have been impacted by not having that extra sort of squad to tap into if injuries had, had hit? Uh, yeah, look, with our reserve grade and first grade, we, we had a lot of depth. We had a lot of players. But the 21s really helped too. You know, we've we got guys in there, like I said to you before, we've got guys that can come up and play like they did play first grade. So um, we've got a really good squad between the three, three grades, uh, and it helped a lot. It does help having the 21s. It really does. Sure. So if we've got players that, for whatever reason, COVID, they couldn't come, we can bring them up. But the whole idea of, for what we were trying to, to build is to bring these young kids up and bl bleed them into the reserve grades and first grades. And our whole aim was to get promoted, which we did, and we've got the depth there now. So when we do move up, we've got players to, to call on. So Excellent. it's been good. It's been really, really helpful. Sure. And just while, um, I, I know I probably should have said this before we started, just uh, don't, don't direct what you say to me. Yeah. I guess talk to, to the camera up there. Those are the ones who care. Um, <laughs> So let's let's keep it there. I know it's kind of awkward, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> in trouble it, already, man. I know, I know, I know. Someone had to be the first. Give me yellow. Oh, just uh, talking about your uh, grand final qualifier against your great friends, Quakers Tigers. Uh, Lee, can I just ask? I'm not sure who actually scored the goals, but were you one of them? By any I was. Yeah. You were. Okay, so scored in first half, it's uh, yeah. a bit of a scored broken a, record with you scoring headers. Yeah, scored another header off a corner in the first half. So. Um, we were in control that first half. 
it was a it was a tough match match it was a physical match um, second half we had some guys pull up sore and injured uh, Georgie Sarkos with an ankle injury and and Adro was had um, a hip problem so we made some some changes that probably weren't required but we had to we had no choice um, and Quakers were throwing everything at us in that second half so uh, one all there ten minutes ago and then um, good old Georgie Marku snuck one away for us uh, with about five or six minutes to go and then uh, Quakers um, yeah knocked one in two minutes in the stoppage time and took us in the extra time and your majesty over here uh, did his thing in the penalty shootout which um, yeah I think we wanted it to go to penalties, to be honest, especially with Danny and goals. He's, um, he's got a pretty decent uh, track record when it comes to penalty shootouts. So, um, yeah, we were pretty confident going into penalty shootouts and um, happy for the result and looking forward to playing up against these guys on the, on the weekend. Um, we've built a good friendship, relationship with the boys at Eastern Creek and, um, you know, friends off the field but rivals on the field. So, um, you know, saw Scotty and that... Uh, on, on the weekend and they wish us luck and um, just, yeah, I'm psyched for the weekend but I'm glad it's against these guys so yeah, sure. should be a cracker. Sure. While we talk to the, 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 the prospect and Jesus. While, yes. And while Lee was giving us that 45 and a half minute speech that we just all listened to, he forgot one massive important point in all of that. He also decided to take a hot dog at half time and took off. Oh, can I get some more, some more detail on this, please? He reckons he's on a hamstring. I turn around and he's halfway through a saucy sandwich on the bench. <laughs> you tell me. It's part of the process, mate. Comes on, uses that noggin of his to score an easy tap in header, he reckons. And then half time he takes off and leaves us to sort it out. What was the, uh, what was the half time team talk about? Was it about like what flavour of sausage roll he went for? Or? He wasn't there. He wasn't there. <laughs> no, okay. Already at the canteen. <laughs> okay, okay. Was it was it a good price, by the way? Was it were you happy with the, yeah, the price? Too bad, yeah. That's good. Yeah, that That's good. Yeah. Tomato sauce or barbecue in particular? Nah, but in all seriousness we, we did well. And we got to that penalty shootout and man, there's some cracking penalties. Like if you watch that footage back, it was unbelievable. But um, well, I was obviously split between two games, but I was basically uh, I was basically narrating the last couple of seconds of, of, of your game uh, because you guys were pretty... I'm, I'm pretty sure you were content at that point that you were going to penalties and preparing for that, so things had slowed down a little bit, so I was able to watch both. And obviously, theirs, yours ended with quite literally about five paces between their first kick, so it was perfect timing. Uh, now, it's very rare that a penalty shootout goes 14 without a miss. Uh, now, if, if my memory serves me correct, it was 7-7. Seven and seven. Uh, There's then the first miss on the 15th, and then the second miss on the 16th. What's going through your mind when you're knowing... Hang on, if, if I've just done my maths right, you had to make the save, correct? Yeah, that's correct. To keep in it? Yeah, correct. What on earth is going through your mind at that point after 15 penalties have been taken? <laughs> just save one. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Literally just save one. So I think out of the seven penalties, I picked six right away. Um, but yeah, that, that was actually some top penalties. Um, plus, actually, I don't think we'd considered a penalty in first grade all season. So that was the first one I'd actually kept against. Um, so, yeah, we made the save, and then we put one away. And then, yeah, um, old mate decided to cluck one up just to the right, and away we went. Here we are, you know, as they said back on, uh, back on the day, you know... Um, no, actually, I shouldn't say it. I shouldn't say it. I'll probably get in trouble. I better just leave it. What's your What's your go to tactic when it comes to being a goalkeeper in a penalty shootout? Do you like to slow things down? Do you stand on one side in particular, or do you want to just come up with something so that it? Uh, yes, yeah, so we'll have to discuss it next week um, because yeah, you never know. We might need it again on Friday. Yeah, you never know. Uh, and yes, of course. So it is a Friday night game that the PL two will be live streamed. So uh, you can you can wait for the the PL to PL one to happen the next day afterwards. But Friday night is in fact going to be uh, a big one, and particularly for you guys, at Eastern Creek. Let's get back to you. Sorry to ignore you, PL one boys, but um, you never know. You could be looking at competition next year. Um, have you? How many penalties do you reckon you guys have taken this year? Would it would it be something you you welcome? Um, I think we've only had. Not even five, yeah, maybe three or four for, um, for the season. 
Um, maybe one or two. Haven't missed any. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think we've missed any. But um, I'd, uh, I'd prefer not to go to Pens. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to get the job done in 90 minutes for sure. Um, I know I won't be taking a pen if it comes to it. I'll be, um, <laughs> I'll be telling who else can go take the pen, not me. We got them, boys. <laughs> the mind games have been decided here in our boardroom. I think what I might do is I actually might involve some of our, our PL1 boys. If you guys can just pass that back while I ask this question. Um, Pons, obviously you had the, the time off. I saw about half of you guys um, to come and watch uh, Duneside versus uh, Workers in, in the grand final qualifier. Uh, it was good to see you there. Standing right next to me and on my right, and I could hear everything you guys were saying as well. Uh, what did you guys first and foremost take from from that grand final qualifier? Um, firstly, I want to congratulate all three teams for making that great effort. Um, it's not easy to get there, so good on you guys. Um, to be honest, um, I was, it, was, it was a good game. Um, I felt like um, both teams uh, played really good. Um, thought workers were pretty good. A bit unlucky at the start. And I thought since I came out at the end of the game and were had three, four chances I probably should have buried and killed the game and not let it go to penalties. So they're pretty unlucky to miss them and then I think Ethan got injured a bit, so set him back a bit. But came down to penalties and they didn't miss one, they were pretty good at them. They all clinch. So Jamison, you're to my left and I can see you're conveniently already holding the mic. Uh, I know we've spent a lot of time talking about penalties right now, but when you save what, three? Was it three? Uh, Two, it was kind of, two, kind of, two. Kind of, oh, kind of, of course, one. and then the, the yeah. third one was just to, to, to you know extend the stream a little bit longer. You know, yeah. what I mean? keep the viewers keep, entertained. Keep going. Um, okay, actually, let's just start with the most awkward part. What on earth happened? Because they kick it to your left, and it ends up in the bottom right hand corner. Oh. So scientifically, what happened there? <laughs> I just like overdove. I reckon. Like I went to my left. I had written down. Jaden videoed their penalty shootout against Quakers, so I had written down on my bottle what ways they went. And funny enough, that guy actually went the same way, but I just went way too far. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of hit it straight down the middle a bit to my left. So it was just like that awkward mm -hmm. kind of thing. And I'm just mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, to the back of the net. I'll actually ask Marcelo Bielsa while he's, while he's here. So Jaden, tell me um, about your penalty. Uh, I believe you were the first to, to no, second, second to take one. Second. Um, obviously, we had spoken previously on a podcast about uh, how your last competitive penalty didn't go your way. This time it did. For, from a personal satisfaction point of view, after such a long game and knowing that we talked about that, not that that was probably on your mind, but how, how satisfying was that for you? Yeah, look, it was good. Um, at the time, I didn't really have any emotion in it. Usually, like, you step up and you might be a bit nervous, but I think I was just... I wasn't confident, but just wanted to hit it on target, and if it went in, it went in. There was no, no emotion behind it, just... I was just praying it went in, that's about it. <laughs> sure. Well, they say defenders make the best penalty takers because <laughs> sometimes they just hit it and it stays hit. Pons, from your perspective, uh, obviously we'll, we'll ask everyone this to, tonight, but how's your, your squad looking? Uh, I know that there's, a, there's some room for competition at, at left-back, depending on the fitness of some players, but how much are you willing to reveal about that? Um, yeah, there's nothing to hide. I think we've got, I think in last game against Dunes, so we had four starters out, so they're all fit. So it just causes a challenge, you know, there's about 18 players to fit into 11, to be honest. Probably 20 to fit into 11. So we've got big headaches this week, to be honest, to pick that thing. Um, everyone's probably telling us to keep the same 11 that played against him, so I did a good job. But um, you got Scott, you got Brenda, you got Jacko, you got Shannon, four players that would be starting in any other team. So, um, yeah, it's really tough. I, I feel for whoever's going to miss out. But I think we'll just... Um, um, set our plans, see how we want to play this game and um, have our strategy. And I think the best 11 that will work for that game, unfortunately, we'll get the, well, unfortunately for them, we'll get the go. Some might be better players, but they'll have to sit on the bench and do the team thing. And I think we're, we're confident, but like I said, you never know. You don't know what happens. Matty Hubbard, coming up on almost a, a decade straight of, of grand final appearances, of course, for uh, once upon a time wearing colours to my left. Um, Man of the match worthy performance in the last game that we got to watch you in. Uh, you know, now that they're sitting right here, I'm not sure if it changes your answer a lot or not. But you're coming into a grand final now, a big occasion. We've we've missed out on a on a grand final last year because of other things, of course. Uh, you know, what's is your motivation just that bit higher, or is you know is it just the same same old for you? Uh, being the ninth, it's kind of the same. 
I've, I've won a few now and lost a few. So, oh, it is a little bit because um, this is the first time we have played them in a final since um, eight of us walked out on the club um, four years ago. So this one, I think, holds a bit more in most of the boys where they want to win because there was a bit of... Um, you know, dirty work behind the scenes from the club when we did leave. Um, like I, we still talk to some of them, but some of the boys aren't really welcome um, back at the club. Um, so some of the boys will want to go out there and, you know, absolutely put on a show and absolutely smash them this week. For sure. That's part of football. Now, Ronan, it was great to see you uh, in a match of the round uh, for the first time uh, this season, for me at least. Um, now, you had a, an early-ish substitution uh, to come off. Uh, is that a, was there a particular reason for that or uh, uh, yeah still... I got taken out by my own player yeah okay so that was the first like couple of, that was the first couple of seconds of the game it was it was quite early so yeah it was a bit of a doozy game. by Cole Dominici oh, yeah. I won't be going 50-50s with him again <laughs> um, hopefully you won't have to but uh, no. uh, it's good to see that you you pulled up enough to walk at least into the boardroom and, and take a seat on that chair so that's good. Um, I'll just I'll ask you because the microphone's in your hand. Having heard what's just came out there, knowing that there are some former players, uh, I do believe that the only I, I don't think that you or Jamison were, were here when when the whole off-field debacle happened and those players walked out. But knowing what it means to them, what is it now? Does it, does that hearing that ramp it up for you, or is it? Oh, you know, some of the boys have been in the club for a long time. You know, you hear about it and you just go, oh, out with the old, in with the new. You know, the new boys are in. We're ready to put on a show. You know, we're just keen, ready for the grand final. Just happy to be here. Uh, now, from someone who's sitting right next to me on my right, I actually thought you were you were my man of the match for the for the grand final qualifier. That one, the, the first one at least. Um, you got a goal. You got the assist that won it. Um, you know, I made a funny comment on the mic about about you being a teacher and giving everyone a lesson. Uh, but you, you know, you, I oh, know, you're uh, you're extremely experienced as, at this level now as well. You've, you've you've been there for almost the entire duration of Ponza's existence, um, playing in a new position this year, uh, trying to accommodate uh, other people into the attacking four. I guess you could call it. How much does it mean for, for well, Mr. Pons really to, to to win another one? Um, I've only won the one, so I, you know this is the third time being there third time in a row, luckily enough. Uh, but I don't know what it means. I mean, you heard Hub speak about it before. Uh, it's more, I don't know, it gives, knowing what those boys have come from and what I don't know, their thoughts are towards their old club, um, that sort of puts fire in the belly for me. Um, you know, most, most say I'm you know, one of the nicest on the field. Even my own teammates say I'm too nice at times. Um, so I, I cop a bit of stick for that. But... I don't know, this this game means a bit more just knowing how how those boys feel, um, you know whether it's Hubs, Breno, um, Scotty Jackson, you know Jacko, all those all those boys really they they don't talk about it too much. I think that's maybe you know the second or third time I've heard Hubs speak about it out loud. To be honest, um, just in you know not being welcomed back to the club um, by some. Um, obviously, there's, there's good people at the club like every club, but um, you know I I think our our boys you could say. Um, you know, you, you have rivalries on the field um, and then you'll, you'll talk to boys off the field. But I can honestly say there's a few boys at their club that we wouldn't say hello to off the field. Um, it's, you know, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep it real. Yeah, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep it real. Um, they, they've, they've honestly, they've got good blokes at the club, but there's, there's blokes there that, yeah, we wouldn't interact with off the field and, and we don't. Um, so, yeah, I know there's an extra fire in the belly for, for those former boys. Um, yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not like the rivalry that the, the Creek and Prospect boys have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> it adds a adds a bit more um, yeah fuel to the fire, I think, for for this game. Uh, obviously, there's not much that the the, the players of Dunside here can can say about that. Not involved in in what happened there at all. So. Uh, it's just the, the the badge is like a bull to see red for some people, and that's the way it is. Um, so. I'm still like that with Kenters because they kicked me out when I was six. So <laughs> I don't know how you don't qualify for a team at six, but um, I'm still learning. Um, I'm going to bring it back to PL2 now as well. So if you could do me a favor and pass those microphones forward as quietly as possible. I want to ask Prospect about motivations for a grand final, considering that you guys are uh, the premiers. Uh, you know, it's, you've done what realistically the second division 
uh, what anyone in the second division wants to achieve, and that is finish first come the end of the regular season. This is just uh, additional silverware. Uh, do, you, do you think, having heard, having seen how serious these guys are and what they're saying when they, when they do actually speak with the mic, it, does it mean as much to you guys as it does to them? I think they have. I think they probably have a bigger point to prove, having been written off by a lot, including myself. Once again, apologies. Uh, but you know, is there is there is the like? Does your desire match theirs? Honestly. Yeah. No. It definitely does. Um, we were on the podcast. I think six or seven weeks ago when we were having a chat, um, and we said obviously the first goal was promotion. Um, you know, we got the big win over Quakers that night in the match of the season that was billed. Um, and we, we were happy, obviously, we'd got uh, promoted across that. Uh, but then these blokes come up and do us an absolute favour on the last day and knock off everybody's favourite Tigers <laughs> after being 2-0 down to come back to 3-2. And um, they help us clinch the third minor premiership as well. So with all that being said and um, everything that's gone, so far it's been a perfect season. And uh, three trophies across Friday and Saturday will also be a, another massive, massive thing for the club. So, yeah, we're definitely motivated. I'm sure you you understand this reference, but when Leicester won the title and they were watching the Spurs versus Chelsea game and they're all celebrating at Jamie Vardy's house, right? Was there a kind of was was this happening at the Boozers household as well when you were like watching the halftime scores come in there and then the full time scores? So uh, we found out we were promoted at five o'clock or whatever once we got through resis. Everybody was like, "All right, well, let's just get on to first grade and do what we got to do." Um, if by some miracle Creek can help us out, then we're all happy. But I'm pretty sure at that point it had been like 4-0, 2-0 mm. to Quakers yeah. throughout the season. So no no disrespect, we didn't have high hopes. <laughs> um, many people did. Yeah, but then about 10 minutes after our game, we started getting text messages um, saying Creek got up 3-2 and we thought it was a G up at first. But after hearing it, um, yeah, after hearing it for a bit of time, checking on Drivel that we were through, yeah, it was, um, it was pretty ecstatic. Uh, the boys were pretty happy and... There was plenty of good banner flying around that night. Um, well, I can actually officially reveal that even Dribble was in on it. You actually didn't become minor premiers, and uh, we were actually hiding it from you the whole time. So I uh, hate to reveal it now. Uh, obviously, it's a, a disclaimer. That's a, it's a terrible joke. Uh, Eastern Creek, I want to throw to you, Matt. It's been too long since you, since, since you spoke, so I'll ask you. Um, synthetic pitch is something I want to talk about, uh, and particularly that of the one that we have to my left here at Blackton Football Park Field 1. Uh, look, it might rain, it might not. Uh, it might be delayed, it might not. I don't know. Uh, the pitch here, is, objectively, it is a bit narrower. Is that something that bothers... Oh, my word. <clears throat> bothers you. That's the first time, first in 25 episodes. Is that something that bothers you at all? Uh, playing on, on a synthetic rather than a grass or playing on a slightly more narrow pitch? Or would you and your thin squad prefer to actually have less of a pitch to run around on? No, nah, look, it doesn't bother us. It's, it's again, it's, it's 11 v 11 on a football pitch and it's I think the boys really like playing here um the light under lights on a at night in a grand final if they can't get up for this then they're not going to get up for much more and for the season we've had to be where we're at uh it's not hard to motivate the lads um I've had text messages we might even have a full squad at training tomorrow night so um everyone wants a gig course for celebration so, almost. That's yeah it's been an well. easy week so far to get to get blokes up and about, so yeah, I think it doesn't really matter. Friday night, get the full weekend off after that. So uh, um, let's hope we can do it and see where we end up. And speaking of having the full weekend off, is that going to be a, a weird change? Because we, we had so much time off in the, in, with interrupted seasons. You know, no matter what the result is, to, to not go out there at you know the, the evening of a Saturday and, and have a game with with a good bunch of boys is that going to be a is that going to be a, yeah, difficult at all, or is uh, that just yeah? Mate, it's okay, been a long se- it's been yeah. a long season. Friday, once Friday's done, um, it's done. Like Saturdays can we can get Saturdays back, and I know most of these blokes can say the same thing. It's and we don't have twenty one, so we're not there from midday. We're only there from from two o'clock. It, it's a long season, um, so. I was probably happy to play Friday night and not have to worry about Saturday, to be fair. Surely you're coming down to watch the uh, UFC match well, that's yeah, happening. We, we, might, um, we, we might venture down to see how that, how, how that plays out. So um, certainly not going to get that from us. I oh, know it looks like we're playing niceties, but um, we played each other all year last year. Um, we've played each other four times now, I think, this year, and it's pretty evenly matched. So um, it is what it is, and, you know, we seem to get along, so... Um, For sure. I think there's a lot of similarities between your two squads uh, outside of the obvious, that being 
slightly more experienced. Old. Yeah. 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 <laughs> to put it nicely. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I think, in all, in all seriousness, like you said about being even, three-one to prospect in in one of the games, four-one to Eastern Creek in the in in the earlier one. So yeah, very even. And then obviously you had your your three-two that went obviously your way in the grand final qualifier a fortnight ago. Uh, in in terms of what I was just talking about synthetic pitch, I'm going to assume something similar, unless you have any sort of outlandish answer to give me now. Yeah, similar. That's exactly right. I actually don't think we've ever won on this pitch in first grade. No, I don't think no. so. Uh, so <laughs> it'll be nice to do it on Friday. <laughs> and in terms of, like, I know you guys, I know you guys do, but in particular, I, I get the the feeling that you guys are have played together for a really, really long time, and there's really, really good chemistry, and um, maybe more than just like football mates, but mates. And I think obviously that relates to you guys as well. But I see it just as much, if not the, the most, out of any of our uh, our Premier League teams. Is it the same sort of thing for you guys? You're happy to get your Saturdays back, but there's still that sort of hint of yeah, we'll miss it a bit. Yeah, I think so. But I mean, a lot of it like it's been a long season, yeah. so Saturdays will be good. Um, and yeah, I think we'll have a few months off and start training whatever date round one is next year. Start training. <laughs> yeah, it's usually is that, how is we that do locked it. in. Can I just confirm? <laughs> yeah, just on the first game. Um, but no, it'll be good, man. Bit of, spend a bit of time with the family, and well, a lot of the boys now are starting to have kids and. Life's getting busier, so it is a good release over winter, but it'll, it'll be a good break from it. Lee and Peter, are we going to see a, a big turnout from, from prospect fans that are out there? Are they going to, obviously, you have an MPL team to call on as well. Are you trying to get them down to Yeah, support? I think uh, we'll, we'll get a good crowd tomorrow on Friday night, guaranteed. Um, we've got a lot of teams in prospect too that are actually in the finals too, so I think out of well, 17 you know, competition teams, I think eight's in the finals, so, which is really good for the club. Um, 21s are here on um, on Saturday and 16s, our 16s are just before them. So it, we'll have a good show on, on Friday and Saturday, so which is really good. So now we're, the club's going all right. The club's going good, which we're pretty happy with. So, Creek's, um, Creek's got Quakers coming down too to support them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> you keep prodding that way. We're not going to bite. We're not going, <laughs> going, we're not going there. We're not going there. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, we should have a good crowd. We should have a good crowd. Uh, look, you know what? It's going to be it's going to be a good night. You know, it's um, the two best teams are there, so um, uh, they've got good crowd too. So I think we'll, like I said, on off the field, we're, we're we're pretty good friends. You know, we all speak highly of each other. Yeah. And on the field, it's just uh, it's a war. So everyone's got to play play football. For sure. Basically, what it is. So. For sure. Now, from a PR one perspective, if you guys could do that again, please. Uh, we'll start with Dune's side on my left. Now, you guys, similar scores, um, one each until we got to the grand final qualifier. So 3-1 the way of Pond, then a couple of days later it was 4-0 uh, to Dune's side. Uh, we know how those games went. Uh, we also know how the 2-1 went in terms of that went Pond's way, and we asked Taylor about that in particular. Uh, you guys have a pretty good record here on the synthetic. Your most recent result here was a 6-0 over Polonia. Um, I believe, it, did you score? Is that the game that you scored? Yeah, yeah. so good. you've got a good record here too, um, and I guess you, you're keeping clean sheets. So for, for Dune sides who are such hard runners in particular, if not, if not you know, the hardest runners that we have in, in all of our BDSFA, um, I know I'm sure you'll have something to say about that, um, but does, does a synthetic pitch and the way this one's built in particular have any impact on you guys? Do you change anything or are you just the same old? Personally, not really. Just, I mean, it's another game on another pitch. Um, yeah, it's no no different for me. I can't speak for these boys, but maybe from a keeper's perspective, it's a bit different. Because I know you love to use width, and in particular, yeah. when you when you make a, an in play save and you can and you can boot it down and hit a, a sideline, particularly your right hand side is is, is wonderfully accurate. Um, I mean, a bit narrower, perhaps that changes a, a couple of things, or perhaps it puts Ethan Iken a bit closer to goal. Who, who knows? Um, uh, from a goalkeeping perspective, I guess you're the um, one of the two that we have here, but. Uh, do, you, do you prefer playing on a synth or, or on the normal grass? Um, look, Valentine Sports Park is synthetic and that was one of my home grounds for a year. Mm -hmm. So I, I've kind of grown up playing with a synthetic field and I'd, although I'd rather a nice grass field because, you know, not get the burns and stuff, um, I think I would rather play on a synthetic. It's a lot flatter. I think it suits our style of play a lot more just because you don't have those bounces and... <laughs> 
dirt sure. fields and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm gonna start waving to the camera so when I slide through, I can know to put a, a little a bleep over that. So oh, yeah, everyone, 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 just wave for me so I can just put a, a bleep. Thank My you. Bad. I'm not gonna miss that now. Uh, excellent. So, uh, Pons, throwing to you to to try and move away from that as quick as possible. Um, you guys have a lot of success here. Um, you've also uh, you've, you've been successful in a grand final here. You've been unsuccessful in a grand final here. Uh, that was a year when you guys had gone. Um, the unsuccessful one was a year where you you were by far and away the best and were undefeated as far as I'm concerned. And then the, the finals things turned around. So uh, I, I'm sure Doonside are aware of that and would like to sort of recreate that sort of scenario where you know the the best team was knocked off in the final. Those boys were involved in that game as well. The ones that are sitting here too. So do, do you look back at that game? I know we've talked about this before, but do you look back at that game now that we're here at finals and, and try and change anything, or is is it is it simply just business as usual and that's 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 a well distant memory now? Um, not sure to be honest. Everyone takes everyone like from the previous games thinks about them different. Um, to be honest, from my point of view as a coach. Um, there's not much for me. I think I take week by week. Like I said, the goal was at the start of the year to achieve certain things, and we've achieved everything that we've needed to to today. Um, we've got the experience. We've had two grand finals now, so, and so we've lost one. We've won one. We know the feeling. We know what to go through. We need. We know what to what to to get to. So I think we're really like really ready for this week. We've done everything that we can do. Um, We've learned from our past mistakes as well, which has led us to where we are today. Um, as a coach, I've grown a lot as well because I'm younger than most of these boys. So I learn a lot of them. We're a really close group as well. So like, I feed off them, they feed off me. We respect each other. We This year at the start of the year, I think I remember we had a podcast at the start of the year and you hammered us about a couple of things that we needed to get better. Um, and um, and that were things that I put forward to the boys and um, we've achieved all of them. So. Yeah, so don't, don't ever think that you're hard done by, by the way. Yeah, everyone, everyone cops it. But it, no, it's, I think it's better to be, to be critical of the teams that are, that are sitting towards the top because if I said that to a team who was down the bottom, it would make no sense because I'm sure they already know about it. Um, so I wouldn't want to rub salt in the, in the wounds. But doing sort of, if I thought of you guys now, objectively, you guys have less experience when it comes to grand finals as a squad. You did one in, in PL2. I'm not sure how many of you boys sitting here were involved in the in the ones where you came up from PL2, but it might have just been Jaden. You know, you guys do have less experience. Is that playing on your mind at all, or is is this something you guys are ready for? Oh, not really. A lot of the boys have been in finals before. We've all played reps, you know. Me and Jaden were in that final. A lot of us were, probably half the team starting on the weekend have been in that final. So, you know, a lot of trauma in the past. We want to win this one. Um, yeah, basically. In, in terms of what I just mentioned about you know, these guys once having a, an undefeated season in the regular season and then knowing that they were... They, they, they were beatable in, in when it came to the grand final and even the, some of the games before that in the final series. Does that, is that something you, you look to for, not motivation, but confidence? Or is it, do you, have you not even given that a, a moment's thought? Um, I think with our entire comp, and they'd, they'd probably back me up here, I think we know anyone on any day can beat anyone. And it's no different for us two. I mean, we got spanked 5 nil by Quakers during the year and no one would have seen that coming. Um, but yeah, I think we, we're confident in our ability that we know we can beat them and we, we just want to go and do that on Saturday. That's, we want to redeem ourselves for the grand final qualifier last week or the week before. But um, yeah, I think we're quietly confident, but yeah, we'll see how Saturday goes, I guess. For sure. Now I want to move into a part where we, we talk about uh, the PL1 team's talking about the PL2 final and then the vice versa as well. So while the microphone's in the hands of our PL1 boys, I guess we'll start with them. So, uh, look, I don't know how much of, of what you've watched for, of these two in, in Match of the Rounds or in years gone by, but I know that you guys played a, a pre-season friendly yeah, against yeah. the boys sitting in front yeah. of you. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about that game, what you noticed and, and you know, yeah, actually, we'll just start with that. So what, what, what do you remember from that game and stylistically? Um, I remember, I think it was a week before, five days before we asked you if you can play because we had a game get cancelled and then they were really eager. They were like, yeah, let's go for it. And I already know they're a quality team because their president and his wife are always down at our club supporting our team and stuff, really close friends with our president. So we're like, let's, let's, let's have a game. We played them, can't remember, we won or it was a close game. But I thought they were 
they were, they were really good. There's a lot of players in their team that uh, also that I noticed were playing in the PL1 from a couple of seasons ago or a season ago, and they've come from they're a good quality team. It was a really close game. They played good spirit. Um, to be honest, you can't take much. It's a trial game. You can't say, "Hey, this is better. You're better. You're better." It's 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 not a comp. Like they weren't going as hard, and we're not going. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, um, I thought they were they were they were really good. And yeah, T- Taylor, were you playing in that game? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll ask you first and foremost, uh, and this is where things will be interesting, I'm sure. Uh, again, I don't know how much you've watched of the other ones, but. Uh, in terms of what you notice in the preseason friendly against them, do you think they have what it takes to, to be competitive in, you know, have a chance at this at this grand final? And then, you know, perhaps if, if, if things go right for them and they are in the PL1 next year, how competitive do you think they could be? I would say they, like, they are where they are because of what they've done, you know, so credit to, to them. Um, I'd say they'd, they'd be competitive coming up. Um, you'd expect that, like... They're in the the final. They're there for a reason. Um, you can't, you know, you don't just get put into a final. You you earn it um, throughout the whole season. So, um, yeah, I'd I'd expect them to to be competitive if they if they do come up. If that's how things go, um, and you know, I'm I'm sure that the boys will will show just how competitive they are against these lads on Friday night. Mm. Dune, so in, in terms of pre-season friendlies, I'm not aware, but have you ever played against either one of these guys before, if you can cast your mind back? Uh, no, we haven't. We were supposed to play against Prospect at the start of the year, but I think it got washed out or something like that. That's, that's um, something I've heard sort before, of yeah. theme of the year. <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, no, we haven't played against any of these okay. guys. Now, I know that you're on top of what happens with our, our PL1 media stuff and PL2 media stuff, so I can imagine you would have had a, a look at, to, to some extent, at, at some of the games that these guys have played in years gone uh, in, in this season gone by, and if you guys have to, please feel free to, to take the mic off Jaden. But Jaden, in particular, uh, what have you noticed about any of these two teams that you think could, could help them come, in, come this Friday? Um, I've, I've caught a couple of their games. Um, I think they're both strong teams, and like Taylor said, they're both here because they deserve to be here. Um, I think Friday's game will be tough. I, I can see it going all the way to Pens again. Sorry, guys. But, <laughs> but <laughs> I hope you got some running in the legs. Um, no, nah, but I think it'll be a very close game. I don't think there'll be any surprise blowouts or anything like that. But, um, I mean, just stay confident in your ability, boys, and the best team will come out on top, I guess. Yeah. Would you be keen to, to, to see a, a bit of promotion with with one of these or two of these sides potentially coming up but that is that something that excites you that bit of change yeah i mean if they can both come up great it only makes our comp stronger so and we can get rid of that boy so um yeah i don't know what's going to happen with promotion relegation but yeah i'm sure these two can both handle themselves in our comp so ronan i'll ask you uh in terms of Oh, I've just lost what I was going to say. Um, that's really frustrating. I've got no idea what I was going to say. It was such a good question, too. Um, far out. Yeah, no, it must have... There's probably a reason for this. I, I'm not getting anything back at all. Um, whatever. It is what it is. Um, I'll, I'll ask you just because you're here. This is how professional I am. Um, Ronan, while, you, while you're holding the mic, actually, I, this might be a, a bit of an awkward one for you, but in terms of you struggling here, guys, that's all right, let me just show a bit of the table. In, in terms of um, your, your position in the starting 11, are you expecting to, to, to be back and, and, and featuring again in, in the starting 11 this weekend? Because it was good to see you play, and I think you were very solid. Um, is it a personal thing for you to, to make sure that you prove yourself in training and, and come back in? Yeah, definitely. Well, I was walking wounded after the game last week, but I'm feeling pretty good today. I'll definitely be back in the starting 11, I think. You know, the boys think I'm a bit of a motivator in the team. You know, I'm a bit experienced. I've been around for a while now, and yeah, I'm, I'd be loved to play in that game. I have, I have heard that, and I can remember my, my ultra awesome question. I'm kind of regretting asking it now, but knowing that Prospect came onto a podcast in recent weeks and said that they didn't train. The inverse of that is for you guys. You guys train twice a week, and fitness is very central to what you guys do. You know, having having heard that, and that been part of the way I promoted that podcast in particular, was that a was that a surprise to you, considering the, the quality of football that they play and, and and how intense they play it? Is is that something that that made you guys wonder, hey, can we take off one training a week and, and get a night back to ourselves, or was it just we do what we do and it works? Oh, we barely get people turning up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> yeah. 
Uh, who's who's got the best record of attendance out of out of you three here? Definitely Jaden, coach's, coach's son. Yeah. He's a bit of an <laughs> slicker. <laughs> <laughs> he has to turn up so he gets in the starting eleven. Uh, no. <laughs> it's only because I don't want to hear about it. I, I can imagine. Do you guys come in the same car to, to training yeah, games? Yeah, <laughs> I can hear. It. I can hear. It. Uh, in, I'll ask you as well, just while we're on the topic of training, Jamison. Um, in terms of goalkeeper training um, and and the practice for the, the penalties as well, how much time did you you spend on that? I told the boys uh, the first week of finals against Quakers, like, you never know what's going to happen. Let's just let's just get into it. So we, we were doing it early. Um, so every week since the final started, we've been practicing pens. And I, I save a fair few. Like, I'm pretty confident <coughs> in my penalty saving ability. Like, ask any one of the boys. Like, I, I back myself against pretty much anyone. Um, so I even, I even the game on the weekend, I said to Jaden... He was running to get the ball in extra time when we went out for a goal kick. And I said, no, leave it, leave it. Like, We'll go to Pens, it's fine. Like, And he was like, no. He was looking at me. Like, I was like, that's confidence. Yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of confidence. Yeah, well, um, yeah, we spent we spent a while sorting out who would take what. Um, but I think the right guys stood up. And to be honest, they haven't taken Pens as good as that in training once. I was so shocked that we went four from four. And like, pretty good Pens too. Like, I was like, well... Yeah. And, and Ben Del Keith yeah. from Workers had had saved three in in the in the one in their winner against Quakers, so yeah. um, that's not something easy. Knowing that they had done that, and obviously you guys stuck behind and watched that game when it happened, um, you know, two weeks before or one week before, I should say. Uh, I want to talk about a little bit of perhaps re- history repeating itself. Now, uh, back in the day, uh, before my time here, the Cotton Cup, which is a GDSFA run knockout tournament. Uh, was won by a certain Pons, and then Marion went and took out our deploy PL1. Uh, Marion are now in the final of the Cotton Cup, and Pons are in the final of our, our deploy PL1, obviously. So uh, is is this a case of history sort of repeating itself with the two different teams, do you reckon? is that Obviously, that's what you want to see happen, but that's, do you think that's a, that's a little bit humorous there? Yeah, my answer was going to be hopefully. Um, but uh, look, I'd like to see Marion take it out, to be honest. Um, They've, I don't know, we were speaking earlier there, last season off the field was a, a tough one for them, uh, for their boys, for their club. Um, and I think, you know, you mentioned it to me earlier, I think it, it sort of went, um, I wouldn't say unnoticed, but it wasn't highlighted uh, what happened there at the club for those boys and, and everyone involved. Um, so for them to yeah, go through something that traumatic, um, I think it'd be, it'd be nice for, the, for those lads um, yeah, to, to get up and... I'm sure, you know, for that certain person that I'm referring to, they'll, they'll be playing, you know, in, in his spirits and for him. For yeah. sure, for sure. That's a really wonderful answer. Matt, I'll, I'll pass it on to you as well. Um, having been successful in, in the Cotton Cup before, obviously you guys actually went out to the, to the hands of Mariong. Um, when, you, when you guys start the season, is it, is it an objective to win both? Is that something you set out to do or is it just, is it just another thing that you guys add to the list? I just... Whenever they put me in, I play. I just, I don't know, I just turn up. <laughs> Thirty-four now, I'm like, I don't really care now. Whatever cup we're in, we're in. Like, I want to win, but if if we're out, we're out. Like, season's over. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> if if it goes to penalties, by the way, we're we gonna see you take one. No, I'll sub myself out. Like, I think we went to shoot out three the first year against Marion. Was it Marion? And uh, I remember Brad Camp saying, you want a penalty? I'm like, no, I'll go last. And then if it comes to me, we'll ask the ref if I can sub myself out. That's <laughs> no interest in it at all. That, but, that season, he was like fiending for getting forward. Like he'd yeah. like ask, can I just join the attack from centre back? Yeah. And then penalties comes along, you know, it's like, no, you got the ball in the box, one on one. And he's, yeah, he's yeah, yeah, these boys, you know, when you play nines, nine, nine, it's, it's a bit boring. boring. <laughs> like, these boys go <laughs> first, they want to get excited and be on the score sheet, so. Um... Has anybody here scored a, a goal in a grand final uh, in our in our BDSFA competition? Anybody? Uh, yeah, if, we, if, we, if we're dating that, <laughs> yeah. not in not in um, Tady yeah. in under nines. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd have to go back a bit. Uh, no, maybe um, I think it was under seventeens. I think. So. There you go. Yeah. Asking as well, I know that some of our games again before my time have gone to very very late in the night. Were you guys involved in in any of those games that went to like? The stroke of midnight, something like that? Now, I th- think the year I played at Dooney, we were supposed to kick off, I think Jaden might be able to back me up, 7 o'clock something, and again, nothing against Betty Survey, but they don't give enough time in between games. I think we kicked off at 8.45 or something like that, 
and we got to the pub to celebrate after and the pub was closed. <laughs> so, yeah, everyone just went home. <laughs> Yeah, and the, well. the Quakers yeah. and um, Town Rangers reserve grade went to extra time as well. So we started late, the lights went out, and by the time we got to the carousel, it was like midnight. Yeah, I tried yeah. to stay like 11 and it was still going, and I yeah. was like a replay or something. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah, was, yeah. Uh, I'll have to think of some, some entertainment if the lights go out for an hour. Uh, I'll start writing up my life story, something like that, um, so I can tell our, our lovely listeners. Uh, I'm going to ask you to push the mics forward I want to do basically the the opposite to what I've just asked there so um, I'll start with you Eastern Creek and, and Scott's in your hand so uh, I'm not sure how much you, you've watched of, of Ponds or Doonside or in their games when they've played against each other this year but um, you know it, to, to recap basically both extremely hard runners two of the best engine rooms in 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 our entire BDSFA our entire 789 teams obviously uh, you know, uh, use wingers really well, great finishing, really tight defences, uh, pretty similar in, in a lot of ways. You know, do you have a, a sort of prediction? Do you, do you prefer the, what do you think will come out on top, youth or, um, you know, the experience? What do you, what do you think is oh. going to happen? <clears throat> it's a tough one. Like, <clears throat> congratulations to both of them for getting to the finals. Um, yeah, uh, being on the synthetic pitch out there, but that's narrow, um, you can be super fit, but you can also be good on the ball. So, you know, if it's a bigger pitch, in my mind, if you're super fit you can, and you can, your engine room has it, um, then it might be beneficial. But, yeah, uh, on the synthetic, it could go either way. Um, but from my only past experience, you know, we've only been in this competition for a season and a half. Um, but we have played a couple of games games against the Ponds over those two seasons. Um, and we have, yeah, we've lost both times. Like, I think this year the, it was a 2-0 a loss, I think. Um, but from what I've seen, they're, they're quality all over the park. Um, I'll be honest, I, I haven't seen a lot of do inside. But, you know, um, from what I've heard tonight, I'm going to be tuning in on, on Saturday. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, it's a grand final, though. Anyone can win. It just comes down to the, the 90 minutes or 110, 120, whatever it is that we could go out to. But yeah, I mean, best of luck for both of them. I'm not gonna, I don't, I'm not gonna predict who's who, but um, yeah, good luck to the both of the teams. Sure. Yeah. Matt, from your perspective, how knowing that you've played against these guys a couple of times and um, haven't played against Doonside, but the, the thought of being able to come up against them next year, if it happens. Now we spoke about that, that last week as well, but. Um, having them them here now and like does it does it does, is it an exciting thing to to know that you're coming up against these guys who probably have a high level of fitness now, but it's something you guys can aim towards and, and look to bring in players that suit the sort of profile that can help be competitive against these guys. Is that something that's like part of your thoughts at the moment? Yeah, look, it's it's we've played ponds, I guess, in a in a preseason both times, and it's been pretty early in the preseason, and we've probably learnt from that in how we sort of structure our preseason, if that makes sense. Um, but I, I think, look, I, I'll be confident our boys would cope. Um, we probably would have to train a bit more. Um, that would probably be the difference. Um, we'd probably have to knuckle down um, our fitness levels and, and we'd, we're looking at getting a 21s. We're pretty close and, and that would help again. And if you're going to be in PL1, I think you need three grades. That's, that's the big key. It's pretty tough with just 32. Um, so we've got plans in place for that. Um, and look, I think we know where we're at and where we need to be at. And look, it is a big jump, but um, I'd I'd be pretty confident our lads to at least give it a pretty good, pretty good shake. And now that you guys are here as well, prospect, um, and and that sort of that first place is locked in for you guys. If it if it so happens that you're that you're able to go up, um, are you are you happy with? Obviously, you'd be happy with what you have now. But how much sort of change do you think you'd, you'd want? Maybe I should ask Peter this, but. How much uh, more change to what you do throughout the week in, in preparation training? Oh, yeah, the change. The boys know it already. So there's, there's two, two, two nights a week training. It's 100%. Um, look, we know we've played Marion. We played Marion in the Cotton Cup last year. Um, we went all the way with them. We lost in a golden goal. So, and that was probably one of our toughest games, yeah. Come off with a few injuries after that game, but it was, it was, a, it was a war. But, yeah, the... 
things have changed. And look, our personnel is going to change too. So we're getting a lot more players coming in. Players that were there last year are coming back. So um, they've had their stint in you know, MPL and they're coming back. So um, yeah, teams, it, team will be different. Uh, training will be different. Attitude will be different. Um, yeah, you won't be hearing us coming on this podcast saying that we're not training. So <laughs> it's not going to happen next year. So, you know, no. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be full on next year. So, like I said, we're getting a lot of players too coming. Look, we we get players from obviously the MPL that don't make it that come down from the twenty one. So we can we can we can jag them and bring them in and, and keep them keep them in, in 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 prospect. You know, so which is handy for us. It's very handy for us. Lee, so, are we going to see you? Uh, maybe not tuning in, but we're going to see you here on Saturday to watch the the PL one game. Is that a possibility? Yeah, I would like to come down. Definitely going to come down and support the twenty one. So. Um, Probably, probably hang around, depending um, on the kids, obviously. So, but um, you know, in regards to the PL1 boys, I know, you know, I watched Doom Side a bit on the weekend when I was having my hot dog at halftime, and <laughs> they're a quick side, they're physical. But I think, um, you know, I think Ponds have been the benchmark over the last couple of years. Mariong there as well, and Pete touched on a game we played against Mariong round one or round two. It was yeah. round two out to at, at their home ground on a, a weeknight and it was it was a brutal match but they were physical a couple of boys in Marion actually Danny and I have played with them in the um, New South Wales Churches comp as well a couple of years ago so but yeah credit to both both teams for making it um, you know there's probably about six or seven teams in that PL1 that can can um, you know they're definitely quality so it's credit to Ponds and, and Doonside I know Doonside was on top of the ladder there for a for a bit of the season too, but yeah, you know, like I said, Ponds have been up there for the last few years, so it's it's credit to what they do over there. They're a um, well-drilled side, and they look like they've got a good bond as well. So, you know, it'll be a very entertaining game on on Saturday night. So we, we very nearly we very nearly were actually on a head uh, a crash course actually with Ponds two years ago in that Cotton Cup. So when we were at Greystains, we um we choked big time <laughs> in the Granville side of the the cup, and we got beat in the final. So Ponds were waiting for us. Yeah, that's right. Right me, yeah. So last place right on me at the time knocked us off to go and play you guys in the cup. And, I mean, no disrespect to right me, but my Lord, you blokes walked through that game. Because um, I think you guys have just played Enfield at Valentine. So we were at Valentine watching these boys. Um, and, yeah, like we, we knew then that they were a good side. And at that time at Grace Sands, we, we had a good side. Too, but obviously now we've we've built on that, and um, we look forward to seeing them next year. For sure, I think that's a good way to end it. But what I might do is actually just touch on one more thing, uh, and completely seriously, Danny, I might mic you up for our uh, Premier League game and see if you're willing to do a, a a warm up interview. You know what I mean? And is that something that it, that excites you? Can I, can I strap the mic to what, the side of the... What exactly do you think a warm-up will entail? Because my warm-up is 90 <laughs> minutes in reserve grade up time. <laughs> um, can I ask these boys? They're watching me score the winner two weeks ago. Yeah, true. <laughs> true, true, true. Uh, so we have to find... Some, uh, Lee, I'll, I'll, I'll strap the mic to... to if you to really you. want to strap somebody up for a bit of bants, just strap George Mark you up and just listen to the abuse that that bloke cops from his own team. Oh, really? So he's, he's We're actually looking to put him on the transfer market if any club wants him. <laughs> Doesn't even yeah. have to be Premier League. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw that you guys were willing to trade uh, a couple of training cones uh, at some point in one of our comment sections. Well, Mitch and Marie were looking for a striker. <laughs> I think were. around halfway through the season, and we offered. Well, we were we were willing to take two cones if George was happy to go over there, but nobody replied. <laughs> so I'm not really sure. I think we even tried to palm him off to Oakville. I know I did last week to Danny, but they were like, "No, we're good," and that's coming from a team that ran fourth. So we're stuck with him. So he might be in PL1 next year, murdering goalkeepers. So you really watch out. <laughs> I, I know what I'll be saying if he gets the winner. I'll allude to all of these things and have them written down. To be fair, he has scored 20 goals. He has. He has. Um, but if we can, this might be a really good time to put up his round one highlights in this video. Yeah. You boys might remember it. I think it was about 11 seconds into the oh, season. Yes. Oh, of course, the, the cursed right hand side of yeah. Black Temple. Yeah. Sorry, George. Yeah. Score straight away. He's past the goalkeeper, and this might be the earliest goal we've seen. Oh, no! Sorry, George. Yeah. <laughs> but he'll play, I think he'll play a big factor on Friday night, genuinely, because whenever we do need a goal, he pops up.
You know, while the, while the mic's in your hand, do you actually remember that, that George Marku miss? I think we should actually end the episode yeah. on this. Do you remember that? He went around your goalkeeper and then... Yeah, I think the ball's still sailing. So, yeah, I do because... Um, he's, still in the, he's still in the ground. Yeah, I think he's still looking for it. No, no, I, I do because um, I lost two in warm-up. So we'd gone from having 11 starters to nine fresh. Um, we were... <laughs> down and out and then we were if that had gone in we were in some big 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 trouble uh, and he missed and then uh, the game went how it did but yeah if he puts that in the, the, that, that, that game's different I think we're a big chance on the weekend just because every time you've had eight or nine blokes available you just pump us and every time you have 11 we beat you so hearing you have 11 fresh he's actually really ringing us off like we, we're no you're right you, you could be right look don't, don't stress we're still going to get through a warm up so <laughs> Yeah, and a training session. Whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. I'm going to wrap it up before we say anything that degrades the, the, the quality of our competition uh, too much. Uh, keeping in mind, of course, and everyone will agree that everything said here tonight is, of course, all about just having some good, good fun at community level. And uh, whether you train or not, um, uh, or you're, you're excited for whatever motivates you for this game, of course, it's all part of the fun and wanting to win the trophy at the end of it. Um, so it's been a fantastic season, by the way. Uh, and to anyone who's made it to this point in the video, for those who featured on the podcast, I'll, I'll expand on this when we get to our final episode, but for particularly our Premier League people, uh, for those who came out here, to those who missed, missed part of their training session tonight, uh, to be here, and, and anyone who featured post-match in particular when we were here at 10, 11 o'clock at night when it finished, um, you've all been fantastic. Uh, I wish everybody the best of luck, uh, all four of you, equally, uh, because I do just want to see good games and of course to the reserve graders or 21s I might be watching as well who have had stints in the Premier League on our match of the round of, uh, to those I've watched a couple of minutes of uh, best of luck for those who've made their grand finals as well commiserations go out to those who didn't get to, to be here uh, it is such a good event there's there's going to be food trucks there's going to be lots of people there's going to be music there's going to be goal updates from all the fields and that's the Saturday that you guys in the PL1 play in particular is going to be yes the most hectic day of, of, of my year but I think it's going to be the most rewarding when the final whistle is, is blown and we can celebrate what I think has been a really good year and uh, I do think that doing things like this while while banterous and, and, and some things I might have to go and look back and see if that's acceptable to be perfectly honest but um, I, I do think that this is good for, for bringing our competition together and it's good to see particularly our PL2 boys have, have, have just been all about making fun of themselves and each other so um, they are all wonderful footballing teams, wonderful coaches that are here as well um, and I'm excited to see it but just collectively thanks very much for being here tonight guys and participating to, to the full extent um, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to wrap it up. So, thank you. Uh, and we're now going to record a thumbnail. So, I'm not sure if this is going to stay in. Uh, if everyone could do me a favour and just cross their arms and look directly uh, into the, the recording part of the camera. We'll just do three seconds. Everyone just hold it for three seconds. And three, two, one, go. All right, we're done. It's a really interesting dynamic, I think, between our PL1 and PL2 teams and, and what they displayed and the chemistry they had uh, together when they were all in the same room. Uh, apologies for the sort of background that you could see in in our podcast. It's just the, that's the space we have, and uh, to fit what I think nine people in at a time, perhaps even uh, a ten in double figures, was 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 difficult. Uh, but I hope you enjoy the content that came from it. What I sort of gathered from that was that uh, two very similar sides, personality and football wise. Uh, between our PL2 sides, uh, Prospect and Eastern Creek. Uh, and that dynamic is really strong. And uh, I'm suspecting big tackles, of course, but I think it'll be uh, shake of hands come the end of it. A little more feeling in the, in the PL1 clash, and you probably would have picked up on that. And I think that's why it's very interesting that this year's podcast is obviously visual as well as audible, meaning that you can see body language and how players from the other team react as it's happening. So I think while uh, Matt Hubbard loves to, to stir the pot a little bit and, and say all these interesting things in the end, he's, he's there to win. And uh, if, you know, if he's motivated to come back next year, which I hope he is, let's, we'll see him again. And he's a serial winner. Uh, as our ponds and as our dune side, especially in years gone by. A reminder, you can watch five live stream commentator games this weekend. You can watch a whole bunch. In fact, I can count right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine live stream games, and which five of them I'll be covering myself. Uh, six, there's six in total. One of them I won't be covering. I'll tell you why in a sec. Um, but you get a bit of a break from me. I mean, I'm going to enjoy it, so I hope you guys do as well. 
Uh, but yeah, as a little wrap up to that segment there, keep in mind that of course it's competitive, but in the end, you know, these are, these are just blokes with, with families or who are working and this is something that's their hobby and they want to enjoy it uh, and, and build the hype around it. And as they deserve to be, it's going to be a fantastic week. Uh, it really is. Uh, well, I should say weekend and then into next week as well. So I'm so, so excited. My first grand final series here in, in my role as well. So I'm, 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 you can see even at recording this at 11.30 at night, I'm, I'm quite excited. Um, even though there's going to be a lot of sleepless nights coming up to make sure that we're ready. Uh, I'm going to go through everything else to do with Grand Final Week. I'm also going to go through those games that are being live streamed. There are like 66 Grand Finals to go through, um, but uh, only a handful of them are being live streamed. Those are the Div 1 sides. In fact, I'm going to go through them right now. So up first on Friday, which is in like literally less than two days' time, less than 48 hours' time at this point, Prospect United and Eastern Creek are playing in the PL2 reserve grade. That's from uh, 6.30 onwards. Uh, forgive me. Uh, I didn't print these big enough. And then at 8.30, the first grade sides will be playing, and it's against the same two teams. So the same two teams face up once again. So Prospect and Eastern Creek. That's your Friday night. Done, dusted, settled. All of your live stream entertainment will be from there. Hopefully everything stays on time. On to Saturday, which is the big day. It is the really big day. Workers from our under-13s take on Quakers Tigers. So that's the first game of the day. That's from... Uh, as early as 8 a.m. in the morning. From 9.40, Newbury Bulls in, in the 14th stake on Prospect. So Prospect back here again. Prospect again in the 15th from 11.20. Again, another live stream game, but no commentary. They'll be taking on Park Lee. Prospect again. Uh, from 1.10 uh, p.m. against Polonia for the 16th game in our Deploy PL 21s. That's the first game I'm covering and the first live stream game of Saturday. That's going to be from 3 p.m., so catch that one. That's Prospect again against workers so that'll be very very interesting of course uh, then you'll get to uh, 5 p.m which is when quakers hill juniors will be taking on marion finally a break from prospect i guess you could say uh, and i won't be covering that one so i don't want to do well i want to but i don't want to do back to back three games i want to make sure that the coverage is good for the 21s in the first grade so uh, will gotsis will be coming in to do our uh, reserve grade game which is the way it is and then, of course, from 7 p.m., if we are, of course, on time here at Blackdown Football Park Synthetic Field 1, Ponds take on Doonside in the Decider, our showpiece grand final across the next two weeks. On Sunday, so that's the 11th, uh, here again, you have Grey Stains who are taking on Marylands in our uh, 12s girls. For our 14s girls, Quakers, Tigers and Glenwood. Our 16s girls, Glenwood Redbacks, who you've seen on the podcast before, up against Marylands, their bitter, arch but competitive rivals. Quakers, Tigers return again for our 17s boys now, up against Ropes Crossing. And our all-age women's won uh, a commentator game, by me of course, right on me up against Park Lee. So a golden boot winner versus the team that finished first. It's going to be very, very interesting to see who can win. Great to have right on me back too, uh, and their wonderful coach who has this great Italian name that I just, Max Andreotti, I just like saying it. So I'll just let you all know now. Then we wait a week or so, Friday, so Quakers Hill Tigers and our over-35 men take on Minchinbury. Uh, that's Friday night, and Eastern Creek, also their over-35s. Uh, take on Ropes Crossing as well. Uh, two sets of grand finals there. So one's Division 2B, one's Division 2A, so two different streams. Our Sunday and our final day, uh, by the way, no, no live streams on Friday, but on Sunday there is one right at the end, uh, but first and foremost in our all-age Division 4, Workers take on Lords in Division 3, Oakville take on Blacktown Premier Spurs, Ropes versus Marion in Div 2, and the showpiece Div 1, the one that will be live streamed in our all-age men's competition, Newbury Bulls against Workers to round off the grand finals. I feel like I might be a little bit emotional when that game ends. I just, I've had such a joy in being able to cover all these games, but certainly will be a lot of hard work that will come to fruition and to... Um, come to a conclusion at that point and we can start looking already towards next year and what that will look like. Now to wrap up some other results that happened as to how we got here from our Premier League competitions of course I will show you the highlights in just a moment. You would have seen that it was 1-1 and extra time between Doonside and uh, workers who were looking to be three time in a row giant killers but it didn't happen they went down on penalties. Here is some basic highlights but then the entire penalty shootout with just a bit cut out in between the, two, in between the penalties. Workers still waiting for their first one of the half. Ethan Iken, they will get a near side corner now. That's a really good looking ball and O'Keefe was blocked and O'Keefe finds it! Those two combine once again and none more important here than in the Southern Death game against Workers. 
Jordan O'Keefe, a two-time Golden Boot winner, a champion of champions winner, and perhaps on his way to putting Doonside into a grand final once again, a place they've been so longing to get back to in recent years. And they've had to work hard, and he's been one of the key figures in that time. Who else would be the one to score the goal? Forward comes Wicks. You never want him running straight at the defence, and Brahoni's recovered quite well, actually, to stop that. Interception is unkind, and workers will strike from distance. Workers will strike from distance! Workers will score from distance! It's Brad Dickinson! The dad of the group! He comes up with the ultimate goal to equalise things here. Well, that's the kind of contribution that you want to have in a match of the round live stream game. Halfway line. Blake March misses it, but Jordan O'Keefe comes away with it. Ethan Iken with a chance to put his side in front again. Ben Dow Keith. Take a bow. Look off those worries. And what a ball. Daniel Alessi is the onside. Alessi Dow Keith again. Celebrate that like a goal. It's deserved. And finally a save. Wow. So Tigers to score, and they will be into a grand final. Who can hold their nerve here? The PL1 penalty shootout to decide who makes it to play Pons in the grand final next week from Saturday night. It's never easy. No one ever wants it to settle like this, but somebody has to be a winner. Up first will be the number five for Doonside, who are going first, Jake Taylor. As the penalty is saved on the Tigers' end, and so after having seven scored in a row for both sides, two misses back to back. All important here too is prospects score the ninth penalty. Let's see if they can do something similar here tonight. As Tigers are out and prospects win in emphatic fashion, huge applause goes to them. Let's focus all in on here. That concludes this start as Jake Taylor put Dunside on the front foot early and a really good penalty. A really, really good penalty. And he goes the same way as Dunside did prior and it gets the same result too of this great club. Ben Keith almost got there. Lachlan Precious to make it 2 all. Great save! But in truth, the penalty was really, really under hit. Blake Marsh, who wasn't brought on late, he was brought on with the entire second half and extra time to play, so he's well warmed up to it. To give Dunside a real healthy lead in the shootout, goes high into the left and scores. That's the sound you can hear, by the way. Not premature celebrations on this end. Maybury, and saved! Oh, no, it was palmed! How on earth did that slip under Himwood? I can't believe that! Can he convert from 12 yards? It's Alessi. It's perfect. Blake Graham has to score with the left foot. The first left-footed penalty of the afternoon. Has to score. Graham. It's missed. It's Doonside versus Pons in the final. It's Jamison Himwood, the hero from the spot. And unfortunately, they couldn't do it two weeks in a row, Blacktown workers. They had a fantastic end to the season. They were giant killers all around the newcomers to the comp. But unfortunately for them, from the spot, lightning doesn't strike twice. And Doonside make amends, having bowed out earlier, earlier in the 2022 year to a penalty shootout themselves. Just a, a cruel way to lose and a, and a slightly unfulfilling way to win, but when it's at this point in, in, in the competition, this is what you're playing for, especially in the PL1 competition. Uh, Dune side and their celebrations went for a couple of minutes. They were so delighted to get through, knowing that you know workers had won a, a penalty shootout the week before. So good on them, and I think it's going to be great to see them in the grand final. Of course, you would have seen our PL2 game. There isn't uh, too much footage by us. You can kind of see the background of the PL1 stream that I was covering uh, with more focus, that went to penalties as well after it was 2-2 after extra time. Two, like, last five minute, what we thought was a winner and then an equaliser by Tigers. They took it to penalties. There was seven scored in a row uh, and then a miss on the 15th and then the 16th to win it. Tigers had the chance, missed it. So seven and seven scored in a row. Then they missed the 15th and 16th respectively. Prospect scores theirs. Tigers missed theirs on what was the 18th penalty. So it was just 
crazy. And that ended right as our penalty shootout started, as you would have seen in the highlights. Now, a final look at our Spartans. Our girls and boys are still playing. Uh, our women's too are still playing. Uh, but they have now wrapped up the regular season. So our boys went out to Rockdale to finish up. The 13s won 2-1. Congratulations to Nathan who have taken this team uh, to a much higher level than what they started as. The 14s lost 3-1. The 15s lost 3-0. The 16s lost 2-0. But the 18s ended the day and ended the Youth League 1 season with a win 2-1. It was uh, a final look at the club championship table. It was wasn't such a good season, admittedly, uh, for our Spartans boys. Uh, but I can promise that we will regroup next year. I've already seen some of the plans that are going in and uh, the kind of attitude that we're taking in, even though this season was difficult. And I'm, I'm really excited to see there are some really fantastic players, personality-wise, human being-wise, and of course, technically gifted when it comes to football-wise. There are just some great players and personalities here. I'm hoping for them for all the best, and I can't wait to see uh, all their games next year, as many as I can get to uh, on those Saturdays. I'm going to call it... Uh, now there's going to be a La Montada season, which means in Spanish, the redemption, the comeback, I guess you could say. So that's what's going to happen next year, uh, even in new surroundings and scenarios. Our girls for the final game of the season, including our women, of course, visited Sydney Olympic, who are always strong, but we had some really good results. The 14s grass is green, the sky is blue, petrol is expensive, and the 14s win their game. This time to end the season before the finals, 6-1. Well done to our minor premiers there for ending the season in the way that they started it too. The 15s won 4-0, no surprises there, also into the finals. The 16s also won to keep their finals dreams alive. I will talk about that in just a second as to how that ended up. While the 18s ended their season, uh, which has been full of change and, and difficulty and injury problems, but they finished just outside of the finals. I think in the, in the final, no, not I think, I know in, the, in that fifth uh, spot, that one spot outside the top four, which is heartbreaking for them, but above expectations, I think, considering how difficult the season's been uh, off the pitch and, and just trying to get uh, a solid squad together. Uh, but really, really well done in what is a difficult competition. Really proud of those 18s. Our reserve grade secures, uh, secured finals football uh, in, in the greatest of ways, a 5-3 win away from home, and the celebrations went on uh, long uh, into the, the first grade game as well. The first grade game, speaking of which, ended 3-1 our way at a bit of an upset uh, Sydney Olympic, um, who were trying to, had to win to get into the finals. Unfortunately, we, even though technically playing for nothing and didn't make the finals this year, we just pulled it all together. Players returning from international duty and the like, and, and we had a really, really good performance. Not quite the best of the season, but certainly one of those that were up there as one of the best. So um, there it is. So a final look at club championship, which counts our 18s, our reserve, and our first grade, we finished in seventh, uh, which is okay. If it had included youth, though, we would have been um, much higher, I anticipate. But that's, again, a sign of great things to come that we ended the season in our first grade, which has had a difficult year. Uh, on such a, a good note against a really good team. Like I said, final look at the club championship. We finished in seventh. Back to the BDSFA. Goal of the season, goal of the finals. So you've seen the promotion that went up for goal of the season, and I've seen about 200 comments across our Facebook and our YouTube page come back. Guys, that's seriously, that's incredible. Like The, the response has been amazing. You guys have shared it, and it's, it's made waves in, in more than just our BDSFA region. So people have been voting everywhere. I'm ecstatic about that. So keep them coming in. Keep them coming in. All votes will count and we will count. I will. I will count every single vote. Uh, even if you want to email me your vote, I will count that to vote uh, as many times as you would like. Uh, and they will all count. Our goal of the finals as well. Reminder, we've had already a three or four sent in, but especially since all of the games that are being played here, all 66 games are going to be recorded uh, and of course, the ones that are in Division 1 or the highest division in the league, um, in the sector or age bracket, will be live streamed. And some, of course, will be commentated, as you know. So keep an eye on when you score your screamer, what general time in the game that was. Send in the clip. Send in some, uh, some, some like 33 seconds and 33 seconds to 45 seconds. That's when your goal was. I will go and find them and we will find a goal of the finals as well as announcing the goal of the season when it does come to the end of finals in about a fortnight. Guys, to those who have made grand finals, thank you so much for being such good standout teams and, and doing things to the best of your ability and, and, and showing you know, how it's done at the highest level uh, of, of community football. And we have such good competition out here and it's so good to see that we finally have grand finals back here at BFP. Uh, to those who didn't make the grand finals but came close or those who came close to making the finals in general, I can't wait to see what you can do next season. Have a bit of a recoup, have a bit of a break, get the bodies back to their best, and I can't wait to see how close it's going to be next year. But in terms of episode 25, I hope you enjoyed what you saw here, a very long segment. It was entertaining, I had a lot of laughs. 
to those in the finals, good luck. Otherwise, we will see you next week. Cue the outro music.